Hey guys, this is Tyler with Black Hat Vapor. I'm here today to teach you about basic coil building. I'm sure you've seen that guy running around making big clouds, having huge amounts of flavor, and you've been jealous and wanted to know how he could do that sort of thing. So I'm here to tell you the basics of that. Now it's nothing crazy. We're not going to get into you know crazy coil builds or anything like that. It's just just a start so you can get going with it. I'm going to teach you how to build your coil. I'm going to teach you how to wick it. And honestly, it's not that different from your disposable cores. It's the same idea, but you get to build it yourself. So that means you can personalize it to how you like it, you know, how much vapor you want to put out. Even if you like putting out a little bit of vapor, you can make it that way too. That's all up to you, and that's the great thing about rebuildables. So like I said, this is going to be basic. I'm going to show you the tools that you need to do it, everything you need to get started. So let's go. Okay, before we get started building, there's a couple tools that we're going to need for the building process. First, a pair of wire cutters, a pair of pliers, a pair of tweezers, cotton, your canthal wire, and some screwdrivers. Okay, to begin building, I'm going to be building on the plume veil. I've already got it dismantled and ready for us to start. So let's go ahead and get that going. It's great to have a set of screwdrivers because you're not only going to be using the screwdrivers for clamping down the wires but you're also going to be using it for wrapping the wires around. Now if you want to build a bigger coil it's nice to have a bigger screwdriver. If you want to build a smaller coil it's nice to have a smaller screwdriver. I'm going to be using a 2 millimeter. It's kind of a good medium ground that's usually what I like to build on. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. First things first is cutting out your canthal. You want to pull out a wrap usually one loop around is best. It's about six inches of wire you want to work with. It depends on what you're building. If you're building something high ohms, you're obviously going to use more wraps, and that's mostly what I'm going to be showing you about today. Now, this is 26 gauge wire. It's a good place to start. Between 28 and 26 is probably the two best wire sizes to start out with when you first start building coils. You got a good sort of low level of resistance, but it's not too low, but it's also not too high resistance either. Now once you have your wire cut, using your wire cutters, you want to straighten it out, make sure there's no kinks, anything strange that's going to make wrapping the wire harder for you. You can go ahead and get your screwdriver, and you want to stick out an end maybe about an inch long and kind of hold it in place with your thumb and your finger while you wrap. So go ahead and start. I'm going to do about 20 wraps so I can get a really high ohm level on this build because I'm going to be using it with a variable voltage mod, which it's much better to build high ohm builds on variable voltage mods, such as this IPv2 right here, 50 watt mod, as compared to doing a mechanical mod like this. Now the reason behind that is because when you build lower ohms, it's good for a mechanical mod because a mechanical mod is going to push out as much power as it can through that battery. Now as much power as it can push out is based on the ohms level. Whereas with a wattage mod, you don't have to worry about that. The wattage mod is going to put out as much power as it can always, whatever power you set it to. Now a higher ohms level is going to be better for it because you have much more surface area wire, that way you're able to burn off more liquid quicker and you get a little bit better flavor out of it. Some people like building low ohms with mechanical, some people like variable wattage, it really comes down to what is best for you. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using a variable wattage mod and building a high ohm level. So let's go ahead and start getting wrapped. You go ahead and spin it around. And when you're tightening up the wire, you want to make sure to get each of the wraps as close together as possible and make sure you don't lose count. I'm at three right now. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, ugh, 19, 20, you know, we'll throw in an extra one in there just for good luck. Now, when you're building on a dripper such as this, you want both of the ends of your wire to be facing out the same way like this. Certain builds you'll have them facing in opposite directions, but for this build you'll be doing it like this as it is with most drippers. Now afterwards you want, kind of want to press your wire together just to make sure it's nice and tight. And when you do, you might get some 
levels going up like this is kind of sticking out a little bit. That's where the pliers come in. You can take your pliers, kind of hold on to the other end of your coil, make sure it doesn't unravel. Just kind of yank on it a little bit just to tighten it up. Now that will cause it to come springy and kind of make them want to go different directions like that. All you got to do is just spin them back. If you notice some gaps in your coils, that's not a problem. That's something you can take care of later on once the coil is actually on there, which I'll show you in a second here. But this is your built coil. You got both of the wires going in the same direction. It doesn't look quite pretty yet, but like I said, we'll take care of that in a moment here. Now once that's built, you can go ahead and get your base out. I'm going to be building a dual coil today, so I've already got our other wire set up built, so we'll start with that. Now when you get a fresh dripper or something like that, usually these screws will be kind of tight, so it will be kind of difficult to unscrew it first. You just want to make sure don't unscrew it too much because you might strip the top of the screw or strip the threads themselves. Either way, it's kind of going to screw you up for future builds because your build isn't going to work. And once it's unscrewed, you've got these holes in the side open. I'm going across from this negative post to the positive post on this side. Some drippers will only have one positive post in the middle. This is one of the few that actually has two holes on each side. It's a single post, but it comes with two holes. That's great for especially high ohm builds because you can actually spread out your coil a lot farther on both sides. Now you can build from, like, say, this post to this post if you wanted to, but for the sake of this, like I said, the coil is long, so it's easier to go from each post to a longer post. And once you do that, it's easiest to have one end a little bit longer than the other, so you can go ahead and stick the long end in. Go ahead. It's like threading a needle through there. So you got one end going through, and now we got the other end through. You don't want to worry about tightening it down yet until you have your other one down. Now with this one, we can actually go in the opposite direction. We actually can tighten these down just because you're not sharing a hole in the center post like you would with most drippers. Now you can go ahead and you want to make sure there's enough space from the positive post to your coil. Just make sure there's a fair amount of space, not too much but not too little. Now you tighten that down. Now you don't have to screw it down too tight because like I said you can either strip it or you could actually snap, snap your wire which can make you build a coil again which takes more time, it's a pain in the butt, it's just something you want to just not have a problem with in the first place. Now notice how the coil looks all wonky, it kind of looks kind of slanted. That can be taken care of. All you got to do is just stick this in there and try to get it as straight as you can to begin with. There you go, and it looks a little bit better now, and we'll get it even more cleaned up later on. You can go ahead and take your wire cutters and try to cut the wire as close as possible to each of the posts so you don't have much wire sticking out on the other end of anything. That's why I love flathead wires because it's easiest to get as close. You can barely tell that there's even coil sticking out of the other end. Now you can go ahead and take your other coil, and with a plume veil, one thing you want to watch out for is how much this wire sticks through because if it's if it sticks through the other side and touches this coil on this side it's going to cause it to short out or heat up wires will melt you know it's not going to blow up or anything like that but you know it will not function the way you want it to function you'll sometimes get burnt cotton and it's just not a good time so you can kind of stick the wire the shorter end through there to begin with just to see how close it gets this seems like it's going to be the perfect kind of length for it so that's good. And also, make sure you keep track of your screws because if you're like me, you'll be losing them all the time. Thankfully, most drippers and most rebuildables will come with extra screws and extra parts. So if you do happen to lose something small, which is very easy, you can always replace it. But it's easier just not to lose it in the first place. Okay, go ahead and take your short end and wait on it. Put the long end in first the short end afterwards. You can also use the pliers for this if you find it hard to get your fingers in there because you have big fingers like me. Sometimes pliers can come in handy when it comes to fitting things in. So you're going to go ahead and fit it in like so. 100 years later and there we go. Now that it's in, you want to make sure, like I said on the other side, make sure it's spaced out enough 
go ahead and clamp down one end and then clamp down the other. Okay, and I would say the best way to cut them is to kind of flip up the wire a little bit before you go to cut it. it allows you to get your pliers in there a little bit tighter. And once it's in there, you can go ahead and snip off the excess and you're all set. Now once again, you'll notice we have an ugly coil on the other side. Just stick your screwdriver through there and kind of straighten it out. Now you might notice some resistance from sticking the screwdriver in there, Just that's just because at the actual Phillips head end, sometimes they have a little bit of notches on the side that'll actually thicken up a little bit. Easy way to fix that is just to take some you know, if you have any sandpaper or something like that, you can kind of wipe it off or, you know, brush at it if you have a brush or something, you know, anything that's going to kind of shave it down a little bit. Now, this is your built dual coil. It's completely ready to at least be fired, and you always want to test fire it beforehand because a lot of the time on different kinds of wires, they're going to put grease on it to keep it from rusting during transit. So you always want to burn off that grease, you always want to burn off any kind of coating that's on there, and it also gives you a chance to go ahead and straighten out your wires. Now, I'm using the IPv2 50 watt variable voltage mod, and one thing you'll notice on this is that it has an ohm reader. That's that little thing at the bottom. It's reading at 1.4, let's see. Okay, we got it perfect at 1 ohms which is good because for a variable voltage mod you want to build high ohms, one ohms is almost perfect. Now once you have it like that, you can go ahead and do a dry burn on it. You'll see it getting red. There we go. And there's where your tweezers come in. Now the great thing about these tweezers is that they're actually ceramic tipped. We do sell them in the stores, they're freaking awesome, and the great thing about them is that you can actually squeeze your wire while you're powering it. If you do it with a metal pair of pliers like this, you'll actually short out the wire and oftentimes that'll cause breaking or melting of the wires and then you'll have to restart the whole process over again. So I would say investing in a pair of these is actually going to make your day a lot nicer, especially when it comes to building. Now let's go ahead and heat up again. There we go. And squeeze. And squeeze. There we go. You'll notice the difference. This coil is now looking a lot nicer than the other side. So heat up. Squeeze. And always you're going to be going through a process of squeezing and straightening out your wires the whole time. And you always want to make sure it's connected. This one seems to be loosened. That's going to happen every now and then. You just want to keep an eye out for that. And make sure the wires are cool before you touch them. Even though they may seem like they cool down pretty quickly, it doesn't mean that they're not freaking hot. I've got a couple burns on my hands from building coils. So trust me on that. It does not feel good. Go ahead and stick that through there. And go ahead and heat up. And that oh, seems like I'm running out of battery power. All right, we're back. I have a charged battery. We can go ahead and continue this. You'll notice how this coil is kind of bowed out a little bit. That can easily be fixed by a little bit of squeezing. All you got to do is heat it up. Just make the coil nice and kind of malleable. And you squeeze, and you squeeze, and you don't squeeze too much so the coil doesn't fold over itself. Now it's still kind of bent, but it's pushed together a little bit better. So what you want to do is kind of just kind of wiggle the screwdriver in there a little bit. Don't hit your um, firing button while you're doing this because if you do, like I said, it'll short out the coil. Anything that's metal is going to short out the coil if it comes in contact while it's firing because then you're completing the circuit in the wrong spot. Now let's make sure both sides are nice. It doesn't have to look perfect just because it doesn't look like the pictures that you see all the time doesn't mean it won't work. 
It's all about function, not form. Well, it's a little bit about form, but it's mostly about function. And you can squeeze, and I think that should be good. Get a couple dry burns in there. You can see how hot that gets. It's like white hot. You do not want that touching your skin. It will burn you instantaneously. But it's okay once it tapes. It doesn't seem so scary. Okay, the coils are built. That's done. Now I'm going to show you how to wick. Now all you need to get is a cotton ball like this. You're going to want to stick with organic just because it's non-bleached. That's always nice because you don't want bleach going into your lungs. That's not fun for anybody, and plus it really throws off the taste of a lot of stuff, which kind of defeats the purpose of rebuildables. A lot of great things about rebuildables is how much taste you can get out of it, so you don't want anything masking up that taste. You kind of want to pull off a strip like this, not too thick, not too thin, just enough to come in contact with all your coil on the inside, but not too much that you can't fit it in there. Now you're just going to twist it, just twist. Do the twist, do the twist, until you get a thin enough piece. Now once you got to twist it up like that, you're going to kind of like thread it, sort of like a needle, and stick it through your coil. And when your coils are extra long like this, it might be a little bit more difficult, but even if you get a little bit on the end, you can take your tweezers, kind of tug at it a little bit, and go ahead and pull it on through there. Now if it starts giving you some resistance, you don't want to pull too hard, you can screw up your coil that way or disconnect it or break the wires, then you're going to have to start the process all over. And trust me, the first couple times that you do this, it's going to take a couple times before you get something that's completely perfect. But once you do, you're going to be super happy with yourself, trust me. Now sometimes you might have to twist afterwards, just kind of get it to fit better. And you can almost use the coils as a thread pattern for the wicking. Now you get the wicking through there and we'll go ahead and wick the other side before we do the trimming. And same as last time, just pull off a piece, twist it up. And this one is a prime example of one that's probably going to be a little bit too much wick. It's probably going to be too thick to fit through there. So all you have to do is kind of unravel it, get it loose like it was at the beginning, and then you can just take like small strips off like this. So you can just remove a little bit. That's a great thing about actual cotton ball is it's much easier to function than any kind of cotton. You know, they have cotton rope, they have silica, I think cotton ball is honestly the best to work with, it's the most absorbent, and also it's the easiest to work with. Okay, go ahead and thread it through your coil again. Stick it on through there, see if I can't get it to poke its head out on the other side. There we go, get a little bit, and go ahead and grab that with my tweezers start pulling it through and twist and pull twist and pull now the reason I do my cotton so thick like this to where it's not as easy to pull through is so it can wick as much as it possibly can you want it to be able to hold that liquid because the more liquid it holds the better it's going to vape now there we go, that should be enough for both sides. Now you can either use a pair of scissors, I find a pair of clippers works just as well for trimming the cotton. You want to trim about, let's say that much. And just squeeze and disconnect and same on the other side. You want to leave some excess. More than you would think that you would need, just leave it on there just so you have plenty. And squeeze and just match up your other coil the same way. And this one's perfectly long so I won't worry about trimming that. Now I find the best route when it comes to wicking is using my friend's Danny's 
uh, method, which is tucking the wick underneath. Now you can use a screwdriver, it's honestly the easiest to do that because you can kind of get a little bit deeper than you could with your fingers. So you kind of just flip that around like that and just tuck it underneath. Doing this helps with the wicking because most of your liquid buildup is going to be underneath the coil. That also happens to be where your coil gets the hottest. So the more wicking that you have underneath there, the more hits you're going to get out of, especially a dripper. So do the same on the other side. Tuck it underneath. Tuck it underneath. And there you go. You always want to make sure to leave your coils exposed because you want your airflow going directly over them. If you have your coils covered up by your wicking, it's not going to put out as much vapor because it's not going to be able to burn through the actual liquid itself. It's just going to be completely saturated and so you're going to just end up drowning it. Now that is your build right there. Not too much cotton, tucked underneath nicely, 20 wraps of 26 gauge on each side, running at 1 ohm. Now all you got to do is drip it and she's ready to go. Alright, we're coming back from the build now. I'm using my IPv2 variable wattage mod. It's one of those mods I was telling you about before. It goes up to 50 watts, uh, which is huge amounts of power. It's perfect for a dripper or something of that nature. Now let's go ahead. I'm using the plume veil that we built on before. And I'm also using this special liquid right here. We actually mixed it up in our lab pretty recently. I can't tell you what the name of it is yet because it is pretty new. But I can tell you that it's a strawberry custard and it's very, very, very freaking delicious. I love it a lot. I have to say it's become one of my favorite flavors, especially out of a dripper. The dripper just expands the flavor so much. It's just unbelievable. I'm going to go ahead and drip that in there. And you always want to make sure that when you do go to drip, you want to saturate your cotton just enough. You don't want any dry or white spots because if you do, you get that nasty burnt taste out of it and you definitely don't want that. It kind of takes the fun out of everything. But you also don't want to make sure to saturate it too much because if you do, your coil can't burn off the liquid fast enough. You won't get as much vapor out of it and not as much flavor and plus you'll make kind of a mess because most of the time the liquid will come out of the air holes. Now, like I said before, if you have adjustable airflow on your dripper or something of that nature, you want to make sure to have it fully open if you like a lot of airflow. You can close it up a little bit more if you don't, but personally I like a lot. Just make sure it's not completely closed so you can actually get something out of it. But let's go ahead and see how it vapes. I mean, you get a huge amount of vapor, even out of short pools, you get tons more vapor than you ever would out of a disposable. And that's one of the greatest things about this is the amount of vapor you can get out of it. And also the amount of flavor. It definitely changes the depth of flavor to a lot of different kinds of flavors. I mean, you could take a flavor that you really don't like in a disposable and you might like it in a dripper or a rebuildable tank because it really does change the flavor. I mean, the hit is freaking awesome. <laughs> it will make you cough a little bit which brings us to another subject definitely do not use high nicotine level liquids like if you use 18 or 24 in a disposable you probably want to use 6 in a rebuildable just because it's going to make it feel like it's a much higher nicotine level and it's going to make you cough out can't enjoy it as much obviously if you're doing that um, I would say 6 is perfect for me I usually use about 24 in a disposable and 6 seems to do the job um, a lot of the times I'll use zero, but if you need that little bit of a nicotine buzz, it's great to go with a six. Um, if you guys need any more information about this, you can definitely check out our blog. Uh, there'll be a blog going along with this video about the uh, basics of coil building and that sort of thing. Um, if you get into it any further, there's plenty of information online on how to build crazier coils. I'll be releasing more videos and more information on how to build, you know, twisted wires, you know different kinds of crazy coil builds and that sort of thing but this is a great place to get started um, it's gonna cost you a little bit of money to get started to begin with but once you are started it's definitely worth it 
Uh, cotton and canthal wire is super cheap. It's not very expensive at all. You can pick up any um, canthal wire at our locations. We usually have some cotton around too that we can give you guys. Um, if you're looking for a bunch of cotton yourself, you can go to CVS. Definitely get organic cotton. If you want to, you can boil it. That kind of gets rid of a lot of the uh, other properties to it, so you can get as pure cotton as you want. But don't definitely don't go for non-organic, just because you will have those bleach elements that they use to actually make the cotton white, and that's going to make it taste nasty. And trust me, it's probably not that healthy to be breathing that kind of stuff in. So definitely go with organic. That's the way to go. It's going to give you the best hit out of it, especially when it comes to flavor. But, I mean, that's the nitty-gritty of everything. Um, I hope this video was just as informative as you need. Um, this is Tyler with Black Hat Vapor, and I'll see you guys next time.